I bought the ring for my fiance. I proposed to her. Um, we got engaged. And then a few months later, uh, she was just like, well, I'm in the place. She, we were just in the place right at that time where she was like, I could afford your ring right now. She's like, so I'm just going to buy the ring. And then she was like, it came in the mail. And then she's like, I could hold it to our wedding if you want, or you just want to wear it. And I was like, sure. And I just took it. I was like, I like the ring. Honestly, I think it looks good. I like it. Fresh, honestly. Right? Yeah. So I was like, I'll just wear it. I don't care. She picked that out before you knew. Or no, you told her I, you uh, I picked it out. It's what yeah. I wanted. Yeah. Um, and then she just ended up purchasing it. Like, That's what's up. Yeah, I yeah. wanted something like this. I wanted something darker, I guess, and then just with like a little strip of blue because yeah. I got a little bit of strip of blue sort of in this tattoo here. Like California so that's blue. Sort of, uh, North yeah, Carolina blue. It was just sort of how I was going with it. Yeah, and then uh, I realized it was turquoise, which seems very hippie-ish. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's being like, yeah, I got turquoise in my ring. That's all right. That looked yeah. good, man. Um, I appreciate yeah. it. You're uh, you're married now too, though. I man. am married, man. Yeah, it's a, it's a different... It's a different game. It is, right? Yes, it, it is. It's very interesting. Oh, it, yeah. It's a, you got a baby now as well? Yeah. You're married with a baby? Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's new. It's wild to think, because we go back years now. I mean, we've known. I've known you since the first open mic I ever did, or the first show I ever did. Uh, you were on it. You, The only people I remember that were on it was you, Josh, and Jeff, uh, and Ron. Where was um, the show? It was at Joey's Comedy Club in Livonia, and it was on a Tuesday, December 2013. Damn, you remember the date. Yeah, <laughs> but it was like, it, it wasn't even an open mic technically. It was like somebody else had booked a show there, and maybe you'll remember the guy's name. I can't remember it, but I went there, and it wasn't open mic, so I just walked up to the dude who was running the show, and I was like, hey, I want to do stand-up for the first time. I'm trying to get up on stage. Can I go up on your show tonight? They said, you're running the show. He was like, if you help me carry my T-shirts upstairs to the club I'll let you go up and do five minutes and he had these shirts that said twerk for maize and blue uh, oh, no. and it was like you know like maize yeah. and blue like you have it it said twerk for maize and blue and he just started handing them out to people in the audience basically uh, that's fresh and he was like yeah you he didn't go charge up. people for them shirts no he just started that's handing them out to some women I think he was like charging some people but he was just handing them to some women like before the show oh he too. wanted to see that ass <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah exactly yeah. he was like you get one for free the rest of them gotta pay though you yeah. know like, mm -hmm. it was the ones with no ass y'all uh -huh. gotta pay uh huh okay. yeah it was something <laughs> like that um but yeah that yeah, we go back a little while, man. I mean, you did a house show that I ran at one point. That I I only did one of them. It was out in Port Huron. Oh yeah, do you remember I did that? that once? I, yeah, <laughs> I do remember that. <laughs> that one yeah, time. I think I was wasted then. Yeah, I yeah. think so. I think so. I was wasted. It was a house show. show. Who wasn't though? Yeah. At that, I mean, like, who goes to a house show sober? Sober. But yeah, yeah that's, I mean, that's the idea. Is you get drunk there? Mm -hmm. I mean. But yeah, that was a different time. I mean, and it's wild to My think. My friends talked me out of skinny dipping with a stranger that night. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I know which stranger it is because I think it's my fiance's friend. For real? Yeah. Yeah. yeah they was like, I know her name, and I'm not going to put the name on blast, but I even know the name of it. I was like, I'm, I'm with it. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm soft up. <laughs> <laughs> Josh and I was like, man, you don't even know them, man. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. I don't even know them. Let's go. It's an experience. Jump yeah. Also, you don't want a skinny war. dip in Port Huron. That's not no. the place to do it of Why? anywhere. What's wrong with that water? I mean, it's like. It's like border water, like in between there and Canada. Lots of ships and stuff just taking oh, probably yeah. lots of oil. Like, like not good water, I think. Okay. I mean, there's probably good areas of water there, but that's not the place. I okay. don't know. But, yeah, I I know it was my fiance's friend. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we talked about it, I remember, like she a must few have months later. Since then. Yeah. <laughs> she still lives in Port Huron. Um, Skinny dip. Oh, yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were saying dipped out of Port Huron. I was like, nah, oh, no, most of them stay there. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's one of those cities. Mm -hmm. um, but we yeah, used, man. We used to go up there on boat night. That, yeah. yeah. Isn't it wild to think, though, slick. like back then? It's like we were. I was a couple of years in running a show inside of somebody else's house who I barely knew. Uh, and you were just fucking showing up and doing house shows, like tipsy and. Drunk. Who would have thought? Yeah, <laughs> who would have thought that? Like, all the way back then, both of us would be here where we are now, man. Like, yeah, man. nobody saw that coming. Like, if you rewind back then, like you're doing Netflix stuff now, man. Yeah. You're like, 
up at the comedy store on a regular basis all over LA. You're touring the country now. Yeah. Like it's yeah. insane. I get the privilege of now running comedy shows inside of a whole comedy club instead of some random person's house in Port Huron. Congratulations. Like, Proud of you, man. It's, well, I know, but it's just wild to think like if anybody knew either of us back then, they wouldn't, they wouldn't nobody would have been like Darius and Kyle. I don't think so. No. Like, Hell no. Yeah. no. Nah, those two, I don't think so. Uh, that doesn't seem likely. But you know, those those were the, uh, the trenches, man. The trenches times we had yeah, to man. earn our stripes and and you know learn those type of things from those experiences and yeah. now we here. Yeah, we worked those little shitty house shows to be able to get to the point we're at now. You know, yeah. and now we're Still privileged growing. enough to get awesome audiences and everything. Mm -hmm. And now you have people coming to see you and stuff. Which yeah, is, yeah, man, I was surprised, bro. Like, <laughs> I, I knew people. Yeah, like, I haven't seen in years. They're like, I'm gonna go see Darius. I'm like, oh shit. We got people like coming fans. out who are like buying tickets, and they're like, I can't wait to see Darius. Yeah, like it's, yeah. man, it's wild to like see that because we were, you know, back then hoping people showed up to it's, sit in that house, you know, and watch some comedy. Yeah, like, yeah, bro. And now you're like getting people who come out and want to see you. It's fun when you see people that you you know, like you recognize people you haven't seen in years, but it's like surreal when you see people who come out to see you and you've never seen them before. They're like, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you, man. I watch your stuff on YouTube. I watch your stuff. I can't wait to see you on Netflix, man. You're great. I'm like, damn, you came out to see me. I'm like, yeah. Like, I don't even know you. Where are like, people? I, know. I just want to. What are like the things that uh, you're getting a lot? Is like the don't tell comedy clip. I think uh, has don't tell done comedy pretty good. And yeah, then Netflix. and then Netflix. The name Netflix really like widens people's eyes. So like, oh, I, I gotta go see him. Yeah, you know, not just with the people with the clubs too. So once they see that stamp, you know, people wanna. How'd the Netflix come thing come over? about for you? Because that was a pretty new thing, right? Like that, uh, yeah. that was a pretty fresh thing. It was a showcase at the Comedy Store, if I'm right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just had an audition. Um, yeah. I think the people who ran it, they see me around town a few times, and then my my management team, they uh, pitched me to them, and I had an audition, and they loved me, and they called me, told me I got it, and I talked to the folks at Netflix. They're like, "Yo, what do you plan on doing? Talk to us, because we really love your audition tape." <laughs> hey, we would be cool if you just do that. I'm like, shit, if that's what y'all want me to do, I'll do it. They say, hey, it's up to you, but you'll be fine if you just do that. That's so got to be an ama like a crazy feeling. You it know? was, man. I was kind of nervous because uh, it wasn't my funniest stuff personally that I think I have, but it was my funniest stuff that I had about me at the time and like who I am as a person in my life. And so they thought it was uh, personal. Like, yeah, they thought that it was a very uh, strategic business move. So now when people book me, they know, like, oh, this guy's, you know, married kid. He's, yeah. you know, ex-player, you know, still got the player verbiage and ways and stuff. And and uh, and it was good. Like, I, I've been getting booked a lot since. Yeah, man. I mean, I saw the Netflix clip, like, the Netflix, like, uh, set that you did. And it is it does give a uh, – for as long as the as long as the video is it gives a very clear picture of who you are yeah. and i think like that is something that stands out among stand up these days is if you can give somebody a clear picture of who you are mm -hmm. in that amount of time that you're Versus on stage. Versus just like being funny. Yes, you know? which is why I've said it on this podcast before because we had him on a few weeks ago uh, was Ali Sadiq and yeah. I told him there the same thing is like his special that he did, the, uh, the Domino Effect. Have you mm -hmm. seen it yet? I don't think it's so. on YouTube. Phenomenal special. I've, I've seen parts of that, yeah. I highly recommend it. I think special of the year. Best okay. special this past year. Very yeah. good. Um and I think part of the reason why it's so good is because it gives a very clear portrait of who Ali Sadiq as is, is as a person, yeah. where he came from, how he f like the, the reasons he ended up doing the things he did uh -huh. as like a youth, why he ended up in prison, how he's come around to it now, and that he still sort of is like this guy, you know, a little bit. Yeah. But he's like, I'm also a father, and like he's also, you know, it paints a portrait of very much who he is, who he was, who he has been, and who he's become. And like, yeah. it was, it's beautiful in that sense where you like watch it and you're like, I feel like I know who this person is now, and I feel like I understand why they are the way they are and uh -huh. exactly who they are. It's it's great to be able to do it like that, like a movie. You know, it's like character development, and the audience falls in love with this character because you you go from here and like the things that happen in their life events, and then now they're at this point, and so you get a more of an understanding. Yeah, and I think it helps an audience connect with you yep. too because a lot of times those experiences that you've experienced they really relate 
relate to. Because mm-hmm. when things are personal, a lot of times you realize they're not as personal as you maybe thought they were. Right. <laughs> and then you feel less, uh, I don't know, people, they kind of feel sad when they go to shows. So they mm-hmm. want something to make them feel good. Yeah. And then they hear certain things like, oh, I'm not alone. Yeah, I'm okay. not as fucked up as it's I thought I was. It's not as bad. Yeah. Yeah. I've you know, had people come up to me many times. They're like, thank you for bringing light to that dark situation. Yeah. I thought I was the only one. <laughs> we were... <laughs> Me and some of the doorstep we're talking about yesterday when people sometimes do that to you after a show, but they'll walk up to you and be like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. I uh, I needed this. Um, what I, They'll like come up to you and be like, I needed this so bad. Um, the other day, what happened to me is, and then they'll like start unloading like what Shit. happened to them, and they're like, I really needed to laugh. And you're like, uh-oh. Like, the second they're like, I needed to laugh. And you're like, oh, here we go. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, when that happens after shows, and we're like, we're just talking about how like, sometimes it's great when somebody's like, oh, I needed that laugh. It's like, thank you so much. But then sometimes, that's usually the catalyst. Like, when you hear, I needed that laugh, that's the catalyst. Like, oh, I'm about to hear some shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I've had women come up to me, start crying. Yeah. Like, you, you just don't understand. You, oh, my Oh my gosh, you're so gifted. Thank you, dude. <laughs> Thank it's you. Wild. Like it's cool. Yeah, it's all right. And everybody just waiting in line, smiling. <laughs> There's and other shit. people like, like, come on, bitch, their get phones out of here. ready standing. to take a picture. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, it's all right. Yeah, it's cool. You know, I'm just here for you. I'm here mm-hmm. for you. You know, sharing my gifts so that you can, you know, you can smile. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I just wanted to tell some jokes. I yeah. didn't know we were gonna have this interaction. You never here. know. <laughs> it, yeah. It's like when you do have it, you feel good about yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, to to make somebody feel good about themselves. Um, due to your uh, shitty ways or whatever you've done in your life. Yeah, I mean, I guess the <laughs> flip side of that is, though, sometimes you have you, what feels really awful is when you go on stage and share an experience and then people are like, nah. And, like, they just hey, look at you like, I've, they're like, I haven't done that. And like yeah. you just get a room of people who just sort of stare at you like, what? I've, like, learned, <laughs> I've learned that uh, everybody has a flaw and uh, a lot of people got secrets. Yeah. And so the things that I share, a lot of people wouldn't dare share. So if, like, if they judge me, I'm like, ah, oh, maybe you haven't done that, but I'm pretty sure you've done some shit that I haven't done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that you wouldn't tell a motherfucking soul. So, hey, I just want to share my stuff so that people can, you know, feel welcome and not alone. Yeah, that's. I mean, it's a great motto. I mean, um, yeah. Now you're getting to share it on a more massive scale and everything. Now yeah. that you're out in L.A. and everything, how long have you been out in L.A. now? I moved out to L.A. Um, right after Thanksgiving of 2017. So it's coming up in five five years. Five years. Yep. Yeah. Do you? I mean, I know everybody. It's like an obvious question of, do you like LA coming from Detroit? How do you feel about it? Yeah. Yeah, it's very different. It's where I need to be. Like Detroit was, it was too comfortable for me. Yeah. So it was like, I wanted to party. I wanted to chase women. I didn't really (laughs) want to focus on a career. Yeah, you just kind of up and left when you left, right? Fuck out of here. Yeah, you just like everybody was just all of a sudden like, yeah, Darius doesn't live here anymore, and we were all like, no warning, (laughs) middle of the night. Yeah. So the story I've told this story many times, man. It's like my uh, my buddy Darren. He was doing a movie. He wanted me to be in it. I'm like, I got plans to go to L.A. He was like, ah, man, just, just L.A. always going to be there. Just, I need you in this movie. I was like, I'll think about it. So I prayed on it, and I asked for a sign. I was on the bus. I was on the Dexter bus going home. I stayed on the west side at that point. I'm from the east side. What's up? But, I, uh, <laughs> but no, I, um, I was on the bus. I'm like, what should I do? And uh, should I stay here or should I, go, uh, should I go to L.A.? So I went to work, and I was closing up work, and I was bartending down uh, at the Aloft. And we closed at 12, and I walked over to the other bar uh, around the corner. And somebody out of nowhere was like, hey, hey. And I was walking with this girl, and she wanted to stop and see what he wanted to, to, to talk about. I'm like, no, let's, this, this is a crazy person. <laughs> this is Detroit. We don't, yeah, do, that. We don't yeah. do that over here. <laughs> we don't see stop to see what somebody nah, wants. I was no, like, if he catch up to us, then yeah. all right, we see what's going on. <laughs> he was like, hey, he finally caught up to us. I'm like, what's up, bro? He was like, hey, man, which way is Hollywood, man? I was like, what? He was like, what's weird is Hollywood? Pull your phone out. I'm the funniest comedian and the best actor. I took that as a sign. Like, all right, I should probably leave. And then um, a, f- a few weeks go by, maybe a month or so go by. We had a, a, a second premiere for this um, the, the spot. And uh, that, I, I, I wasn't really feeling it. And then the girlfriend at the time walked out of the premiere because I was doing drunk shit. And I was like, I have no reason to be here, man. I'm about to leave. I was crying. I t- told my cousin to take me to the airport. I went home. I grabbed a toothbrush and a Bible, and um, and I went to the airport. And I bought a one-way ticket to L.A. And that you just 
Did you know where it? Did you know? I didn't where know you what the fuck I was no? gonna do. I just knew that uh, Ron was out there, Ron Taylor, and then my cousin was out there. So I knew that they would, they might be able to help me. But I also thought like, because I love New York, right? And I had never been to L.A., so it was too cold to go to New York without a plan. L.A., I'm thinking I can at least sleep on the beach, right? <laughs> yeah. And uh, but you forget that it gets cold as shit out there, like bone dry cold during the winter time. Yeah. And uh, got out there. And I slept on uh I slept on my cousin's couch until she kicked me out. I slept on Ron's uh, floor because he had a a place like a hostel place. Mm-hmm. And then I slept in his van whenever he had company over there. And then they weren't like dependable really, so I, I slept outside one night because they weren't answering the phones. I'm like all right, I'm hanging out with y'all today. I sat on the the ground, and then I laid on the ground. Yeah, one of those vents, you know, where all the smoke comes up mm-hmm. to stay warm, and then something crawled up my leg. I got up, a rat just ran. I can't do this shit, man. So then I just, <laughs> I went into survival mode. So I went to bars, and uh, I started making friends. So I started, I, I had a rotation of five different women. Uh, <laughs> I who, remember this whose time. Places yeah. I could, uh, I could stay at, and I told them all the same shit. I, re- yeah. I was like, yo, I uh, I came out here for a dream. I didn't come here for love. You know, I want to hang out with you, but I'm hanging out with other girls too. So if I can stay here time from time to time, that'd be cool. And they all was like, all right, bet. Until they got this. feelings. I remember this. You came back home. You did the comedy show that I run through and through comedy around this time. Yeah. And then uh, I was like, how's it going out there? Where are you like staying at? And then you were like, I got like five different women. I'm just staying with them. And I was like, and I thought at first, I was like, oh, really? I was, like, I kind of laughed at it. And you're like, nah, for real. Like, it's just, I'll just sleep where, which one lets me that night. I was like, yeah cool man i was like whatever works for you i was yeah. like hey dude if it's working out out there oh yeah, yeah. Bro. I kept and you made it work clean dude. draws man and uh just rotated it until they caught feelings and they wanted me like <laughs> no nah, you can't hang out with nobody else but me i'm like well i can't use you for that i gotta i gotta leave because yeah. i ain't, I ain't <laughs> not, into that yeah i'm not trying to get to the rent point of this relationship no no because that's gonna make me distracted again <laughs> from, from the goal i came out here for a goal and then i end up getting a job at Macy's being security and then I got a bartender job at the the pool at the uh, Roosevelt and then like things just started to click then I got a job at the store yeah the store I, uh, yeah I mean you sort of uh you got a job at the store probably right a little after Ron Taylor got passed yeah. there right so yeah. it's almost like you kind of I mean from a Detroit perspective we're like oh cool Darius is replacing Ron Ron got passed <laughs> now it's Darius is terrible yeah. to work his way up like he, um, it looked almost like that even though it probably wasn't necessarily that it might have been somebody else's spot from a technical standpoint you know yeah. what I mean I mean from like the far away Detroit standpoint I remember some of us watching it from out this way and being like oh man Darius is next then yeah some people took, quit right away when they get past uh he stayed there for a little bit you know while yeah was, you know, i remember that somebody told me that i think ron might have told me that that like he kept working there and picking up some shifts and stuff mm-hmm. yeah 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 i think uh the way you get in is different for everybody my shit was different like i uh i went to potluck signed up did a good job and then somebody said hey the host likes you not the host the, the booker so just keep signing up and uh was that emily or adam at the time uh, that was Adam at the time. Yeah. And then I went up again and uh I think Ron was Ron talked to the book. I was like, Hey, my buddy's going up, you should check him out, he's good. And um he watched me and then he talked to me. He was like, Hey bro, uh keep signing up. Come back next Monday. He said yeah. it to me like five times, like, Come back in two weeks, come back and such and such. Kept going up, come back next week and do brand new three. Went brand new three, he wasn't there. So I'm like, I talk to the door guys. I'm like, hey, do y'all revert back to him? Do you report to him? Tell him how good I did. They said, nah, you got to do it again when he come yeah, back. Yeah, you so, just got to hope he's here. Yeah, yeah, and then eventually he was like, I got this thing, friends and family. You sign up. Uh, you call with your avails, and, you know, I can get you a spot maybe once a week uh, if you're interested. I did that. And then he asked me if I was interested in working there. And I I didn't want to be a door guy. I, mean, I was like, I'd rather be a bartender. And he's like, I don't know if I can help you with that. But, you know, if you want to be a door guy, let me know. You know, you get spots. You can hang out with the elites, you know, get to know them. And then I, I talked to Punky Johnson, who was working there at the time. Mm-hmm. Who's, she's now on SNL. SNL, yeah. And I talked to Ron. And they both was like, bro, you should do it, man. You get past quick. You're funny. People like you. Uh, you should do it. And so I did it. And uh, I think I was there 2019. I got there at, uh, well, before I started, I said, all right, I'll do it. 
months go by, they hire Ali Mikowski. I'm thinking, damn, I missed out on my opportunity. That was probably the spot that I was going to get. Two more months go by. They was like, hey, when can you come in to to train? And that was like in July of 2019. And I was there until the pandemic hit. Yeah. And then once the pandemic lifted up and people started to go back, I had already had a baby. And I'm like, ah, uh, I would rather spend my nights with the baby versus, <laughs> yeah. you know, taking out trash and shit. Yeah, I mean, that makes a lot more sense that you would want to spend more time with your baby and everything. I mean, it. It so you came back from the pandemic. Do you still work at the store at this point? Or? I don't work no. there. I do do spots still. Okay. Yeah, so I'll go up there, hang out occasionally, smoke a cigar on the patio. I yeah. fuck with cigars now. That's my no. vice. <laughs> That's your vice yeah, now? Yeah, because I don't drink no more. you told me two and a half years ago you got clean from the booze, which, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. good, which good is... While. It's wild because, like, I said it to you yesterday. It's like, man, you could see, like, it's it's got to have done something there. I mean, because the career has taken a turn in the past two and a half years. I mean, you got to notice it. Like, I notice it from a outside perspective. You got to notice that things have, like, taken off a little bit. Do you would, do you, would you attribute that at all? I mean, I know you got a wife and a baby now, so your perspective on the world has changed, too. So there's other factors, obviously, that play into this, you know. And also, it's opportunity, meeting timing and everything, you know. So there's a lot of factors, obviously. But do you think that played a part? in it at all do you think it's like changed your work ethic or anything um since my family has changed my work ethic especially having a baby girl you know you want to provide for them you just naturally want to do more you know you don't even have to convince yourself you just do it (laughs) and like your hustle just triples as far as uh the drinking the drinking uh cutting that out definitely made me focus more and then uh i quit the drinking before I had uh, got serious with my with my wife, and uh, people think that it's due to her, you know. But really, no, it's because I stopped drinking and I was able to get blessed with such a you know wonderful uh, life partner. And um, people back in Detroit, they don't really know that sober Darius. They know Darius for you know the the the, 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 the hound with the ladies yeah. and, and the yeah. drinking. Whiskey, yeah, we scotch. all remember a certain Darius from back in the day. But, yeah, yeah, they don't they don't know this person really. So we're putting it on record now on Detroit Comedy Podcast that this is a different Darius than yeah. you guys knew. Yeah, yeah. more poise, more uh, you know, more of a thinker. You're really. calmer, more collected with your thoughts. Yeah. I think. Uh, yeah, I feel like you've uh, you've slowed down a little on stage too. I think with like your timing a little bit. I think mm-hmm. you. Uh, I think you're taking your time a little more. You're more, on stage, you're more aware. You know? Me personally, yeah. I'm more aware when I'm. Uh, I have a clear mind. You know. Yeah, and I think part of that timing plays into the awareness of this. You know, like that awareness is part of the timing. I think is like you are aware of how long you could sit on that silence. You know, you're aware of how long you can use that silence for the effect of a joke and everything. And you have that sort of awareness, and that helps. And I think sometimes that could help from having a clear head. You know, in that yeah. way. But that's awesome. I mean, and it yeah, it's also definitely makes sense that the baby, uh, you know, propels you to want to do this as well. You know, that's gonna be a massive motivator. It is. I mean, how old's the baby now? One. One. Mm-hmm. That's. Yep. Yeah, she turned one. one in July. Yeah. And then, how long uh, have you? So you and the wife have been together a couple of years. Then. We've been married a year, a year and a few months. And then how? Uh, you met yeah. well, a couple of years. Because you said you've been sober two and a we, half years. We we met in 2019. Okay. So we met in 2019, and uh, I was just a fling thing like for her. Like, and the like, wife's a creative as well, if I'm correct. Yeah, she got a podcast, Eating While Broke. Check out that podcast. Great podcast. Yeah. Um, she interviews uh, self-made entrepreneurs and uh, influencers over a meal they used to eat before they found success. Um, but like we would, we would hang out and we would just like, you know, we were like hook up buddies pretty much. And I was trying to take her serious, but she wasn't trying to take me serious. Yeah. I ain't have a lot. <laughs> it was weird when we first met, we met at like crack em up Thursdays. Okay. At the comedy store, yeah, legendary comedy show at the comedy store. If you're not aware, uh, yeah. if you're not aware, make yourself aware. You should know of crack em up Thursdays. Crack em up Thursdays, every Thursday, belly room comedy store. Um, she had walked up to me after my set was like, Hey, nice set. And my wife is a very attractive lady. Um, but that's all she said was like nice set. So 
I think I was still drinking then. She didn't want to give you much, you know. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, what she want, man? I'm like, is she? Because you don't know who you're talking to in yeah. L.A. You know, you could be talking to a producer, you could be talking yeah. to somebody who just want to hook up. You know, it doesn't matter what they look like. They can look like a bum and they run the town and they look like money and they don't have a dollar. We've seen how Adam Sandler dresses. Hey, me, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> dude just like that. Basketball shorts and ill-fitting t-shirts, paid. Or hoodies, yeah. paid. And that dude is so rich. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, how can I approach her without? You know, stepping on my own toes, you know, so I went up to her and I gave her the worst about me. I said, yo, I got two DUIs, a public intox. I cheated on everybody I ever been with. Uh, I ain't shit. <laughs> so, so she was like, oh, man, that is it's true. an approach that I don't think I I, I've never done that before. I used to like try to run game and like try to control the situation. But it's like if I I'm not trying to waste your time. I don't want you to waste my time. So I love how most guys shit. would be like, you have the most beautiful fa- or like, let me buy you a drink. Nah. And you're like, I got DUIs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, here's yeah. my rap sheet. Here's actually, my, rap sheet. Yeah. my criminal record right here. And um, oh, so she was like, those are a lot of red flags. I said, yep, yeah, but you're going to have a lot of fun, too. <laughs> and so we, we was kicking it, man. We was kicking it for a minute. And then, like, she got really upset at me at one point because I, you know, was back and forth with somebody else. And she avoided me for, like, six months. Mm-hmm. Understandably so, probably. You're back yep. and forth with somebody else. Yeah, yeah. I, I told her the truth. You know, she was like, well, thank you for telling me the truth. I'm out of here. Yeah. <laughs> so, what do you, I mean, why can you say that? Like, I, I yeah. get it. Like, yeah, I get it, you know? Yeah. Um, but then the pandemic hit, and then we spent every day of the pandemic together, and we really got to know each other. It's so, like, she didn't know me. She was just like, you know, just kicking it with me. But she was like, oh, you dope. You really dope. Like, I've been telling you that, you know? Yeah. Been telling you that. But yeah, I had quit drinking, uh, you know, 2020, January 2nd, 2020. And, um, she had, uh, I think that was like the third or fourth month of her ignoring, you know, me trying to reach out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then she ended up coming back in like March. Ah, right before the pandemic hit or right as it hit? As it hit. As soon as the pandemic hit. Oh, okay. She was looking for somebody to hang out with. You gotcha. Know, so I, was, I was fun to her. I mean, the pandemic is like a true test of if you could be a couple, though. I think like that's really, I mean, of all situations to find out if this can work, that's the way to find out if this can work. Yeah, exactly. Like just bunked up together, you know, like that's how you find out for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How you uh, meet your lady? What? How you meet your lady? Tender. Tender. Back in the day. Uh Oh, shit. (laughs) So I was at a point where uh, with Tender, I sort of... um, I, I at first was using it very much for what most people use Tinder for. You yeah. know, I was just trying to fuck. You know, yeah. and like, uh, I think at a certain like she sort of was at that time too. And like we've talked about it, and then we both I think somehow had reached a point in our lives right around the same time where we were on Tinder, both just sort of like whatever happens happens. If it ends up being a hookup, it's a hookup. But if it ends up being something more, if that's fine too. Neither of us were looking for anything, but neither of us weren't looking for anything either, you know? Like, we both sort of, I guess, hit the same point in our lives at the same time and then came across each other, thought it was just going to be a hookup initially. Honestly, that's what it really seemed like it was going to be. And then um, we both just ended up catching feelings, you know? And, like, uh, I think about a month or so later, like, we really realized we were in a relationship and... We put like the title on it being a relationship, you know, Mm -hmm. and the exclusivity idea of it and everything. Um, And then, uh, you know, we had our ups and downs for some years because we started dating when I was 21. Like I started stand up at 19. When I met her, I think I probably had just as poor of an approach as you might have had at first where like I sort of laid some shit out that like in hindsight is... You know, I mean, like, I I remember meeting her, and every woman I met at that point, I would tell them, like, before we even met up, like, off of Tinder or anything, I'd be like, just so you know, comedy's always going to be number one in my life, and anything else, including you, will come second, which... You know, like to some extent, like is true sometimes, but it's like you got to put the woman first sometimes, you know, like you can't always put yourself first. Like it's like while most of the time my priorities have come first, there is absolutely times where I got to put her first. And that was an unrealistic perspective to have. But like at the time it was very much like 
it's all about me. And if you got a problem with that, you know, I was like, this is who I am. And I laid it out right out front. Cause like I had issues with women who wanted more than that. And I was like, nah, comedy's number one for me right now. I was like 21. Sometimes like, it's like, what you say is about your delivery. Yeah. If, <laughs> if you don't put her first, you have to at least make her think that she is first. See, that was, find a way to make I her think that think was like, the problem. For first. A, that was the problem for a while is like, I, I started trying to be like, no, I am putting you first, but I like really wasn't. And then, so like we had our ups and downs and you know, at one point we broke up and like we, uh, we split like a couple times just cause like I couldn't get my shit straight, you know, man, like I was young and I just, I was just kind of dumb and, uh, it prioritized everything wrong in my life. I didn't give a shit about stuff that I should have. Um, but you know, it took growth. It took therapy. It took different things for me, but mm -hmm. I ended up growing up. How long have you been together? We've been together now coming up on seven years. A long time, um, man. I'm, 28 now when we're gonna be seven years we're in our seventh year now so yeah when um, did you uh move in together we moved in together uh about first day a little over two years ago okay. um yeah so we waited a little bit before we moved in together yeah. um we moved in together in the summer of 2020 so like august 2020 i think is yeah. like when we moved so probably about two years on the dot um but yeah, I wanted to live with her a whole year before I proposed to her to like make sure like this is truly going to work out. Like we can live together and yeah. function together. Like because I knew I wanted to be together for at least five years and I wanted to live together for at least one year. Mm -hmm. And that was like, I was like, yeah, this is what I want. And then I started talking to some of my buddies that, you know, like Brett Hayden and Brett Mercer. They're like yeah. two of my closest friends. And I just remember telling them probably six months before I did it. I was like, I'm going to marry her. I was like, see, I was like, I'm just telling you, so like, you know, and you're not like totally surprised when it happens. I was like, but yeah. I plan on marrying Ashley. What they like, say? They're like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> like they were like, mm -hmm. they're like, yeah, congrats, dude. That's awesome that you know. That. Like they were not surprised by it really. Like you hedge bet. I think they were a little bit like uh, surprised that like, cause I, I think. They were just a little bit surprised because they didn't necessarily think it was uh, gonna ha like that I was gonna say that or anything, you know. But they were like, "Yeah, it also makes sense." Like you guys have been together for years, and yeah, they were very much in the corner of it. They were very much in support of it. Mom. They weren't like, "Are you sure?" Like you know, like that's not the reaction you want from your friends. Yeah, my uh, my homies and my family they were all in my corner. You know, when I got married, when I was about to get married. Yeah, but they were all su surprised as well yeah like you getting married yeah i think that was sort of my friends too like <laughs> it wasn't like you i guess maybe a surprise is darius bennett getting married but like oh, yeah. the people you know people who hadn't known you for or seen you in a while in detroit probably were a little surprised you know oh hell yeah yeah, yeah. See, you 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 married yeah. you <laughs> yeah. you i yeah. thought so many people say i thought you'd never get married bro never <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that wild? Yeah, like no, nah, it's, it's understandable. I get it because that's that's what I would give them. You know, that's yeah. the only thing I, I didn't show them all of me. You know, but just it's like it's wild way. that you now like have that chance to sort of like show them and like prove to them like yeah, it wasn't like a crazy decision. Like and now people are probably looking at it like yeah, I see it. Like yeah. people are probably changing their tones now. You know, now that you got a baby and they see like you're happy and like you're yeah. working and like you're doing your thing now while having this relationship and a child, you know, mm -hmm. and like having a family and people are now seeing that you're doing it. You know, yeah, I, I evolved, but like with me, it had to do with the location. Like I said, I had to leave because I was just too <laughs> comfortable. I wasn't really, you know, growth is very uncomfortable. You know, like you go to the gym, like if you put in the work, that shit hurts. Yep. You know, but then eventually you see the gains and you see like the benefits of going. But uh, that's kind of like a relationship or just like with, with, with life in general, you know? Yeah, it's the same thing with comedy. I mean, I think like, um, somebody i heard sort of do uh say something similar about like having to fall and get up again and like sort of that analogy in a sense is you have to hurt yourself is mark Marin said something a long time ago i don't remember probably heard him say it on his podcast or something but he's like a lot of uh comedians who skateboarded when they were younger tend to be good at comedy because they learned at a young age to fall and fall over and over again and keep getting up and keep trying over yeah. and over again. So it's like that failure and, you know, that 
failing over and over again and going through the hard parts, you know, being able to do that and keep getting back up and being able to work through that is what's going to make you stronger in Mm -hmm. the end. And so he's like a lot of comedians who were skateboarders got used to falling over and over again and you got used to failure. He's like, and those are people who are good with accepting failure and you got to accept that to be able to grow and finally land that trick or be able to get that joke right. You got to be able to fail with it over and over again. Yeah. Yeah, you can't be afraid to to take that approach, you know, to do that ollie or to make that jump. Yep. People get they just skate on like the same jokes that they know are going to work, and they're mm-hmm. too afraid to try out new shit because they don't want to yeah. s- scrape that knee up. Exactly, scrape that knee up. You know, yeah, it's all of that failure is going to yeah. make you stronger in the end. Uh, but yeah, when I heard that skateboarding analogy, I was like, that makes so much sense. I was like, yeah, yeah. he's absolutely right about that. I was like, I never thought about skateboarders probably make good comedians i was like that's yeah. wild but yeah, i never heard that either but it's somebody who you know it. who's been in the industry for years mark Marin. so it's like it he once i heard him say it i was too, like oh, I yeah. think. what i think he used to work at the store oh really yeah he was a door guy at the comedy store i didn't too. know he was a door guy i knew he was passed there yeah he's, he's gotta passed. be wild you gotta yeah. i mean you probably interacted with him at some i mean you probably cross paths with him here or there you yep. know like which is why you cross paths with quentin tarantino the other I day did. if i'm correct <laughs> i saw this on social media i almost forgot yeah. to even bring this up you oh, get yeah. a, you cross paths with quentin tarantino uh-huh. and you got a picture with him with him like his arm around you pointing to you like this fucking guy yeah. like yeah, how bro. did that go what was that all about i did a spot at um in the beginning of the beginning portion of roast battle, they have comedians go up and do sets. Yeah. And so uh, I did like 10 minutes and right before they started the show. And uh, he was in the audience. My wife was there and they were filling my jokes. They enjoyed themselves. And we hung out. We watched roast battle. And then I smoked a cigar on the, the patio, just kicking it. Uh, with the wife, and I went to the back to go get some water, and somebody was like, oh, man, I'm glad you're here, bro. I'm glad you're still here. Quentin was fucking talking about you, man. I'm like, oh, yeah. He's like, yeah, he's in the back. So I went to the back, and everybody's in the back. A few people were surrounding him. Quentin sees me, stands up. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my. You're so funny. So funny. So funny. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my. You had me dying laughing. Oh, man, so funny, man. Kind of remind me of, I, I said a joke about, uh, you know, fellatio. He was like, oh, man, kind of remind me of, uh, of, uh, Damn, uh, Sam Kinison, uh, you got to go see it. Go, go watch that special. Go look at it, uh, ABC uh, album. And thank you very much, bro. I appreciate you. And um, I was like, I'll be right back. I'm going to go get my wife. And I went back to get my wife. And then he said the same thing in front of her. And people were just watching, just looking amazed, I guess. And I was just soaking it up, just, you know, just being chill. Like, thank you very much. I'm, yeah. I'm like, the I'm back waiting of your on head, him. You want to be like, you got a role in a movie? I'm, I'm, <laughs> wait, I'm waiting on him to say that. You know, so I'm like, oh, I appreciate you, man. You know, and you want me in the next? Uh, yeah. What's up, bro? And, and so uh, we took a picture. Um, uh, he wasn't taking pictures with anybody, you know. Um, people wanted the picture. He was like, I'm not taking no fucking pictures. And he was like, I'll take a picture with you, man. Whatever you want, you know, post it. So we took a picture together. And then I made sure that uh, I got my wife in the picture as well. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he's in the middle of uh, my wife and I. And it was dope, you know. And my wife was more excited than I was. You know, I was like, I was kind of cool. You know, it was was fun. Yeah. But she was like, oh, my God, Quentin Tarantino. Oh, my God, that's pretty dope. Do you have a favorite Tarantino movie? Uh, Probably Django. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I watched Django Man. a lot. Yeah, that's got to be a wild experience. I mean, and that's got to, I mean, besides that happening with somebody who's like involved in film, being around the store and doing spots at the store, it's got to just happen with comedians you admire, like on a somewhat regular basis as well. I mean, you got to like, I'm sure sometimes you get these comedians that you have admiration for who come up and compliment you and you're just like, fuck, man. Like, you know, like that's got, I imagine that's not the first time that's happened at the store, you know? Like, no, it's not the first time. Yeah. I had met Chris Rock uh, before the Oscar incident. Um, he didn't see me perform. I had just went up and in the main room, and I think like 10 minutes later, he walked in and we were just discussing comedy, talking about like what's his favorite room to do, what's his favorite uh, crowd size. You know, he was saying like 3,500 is a good size. You know, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> you're like, yeah, don't I know it? Like, like, he was yeah. like, you you're know, like, yeah, I agree. I felt like the same size, 10, Chris. Like, <laughs> right? Yeah. But he was just saying like 10,000, like thousands. I forget. I think he said 40,000 is probably his highest or maybe even more. But with, with that type of crowd, it's like you have no time to really break or yeah. wait for the laughs to roll back. You got to like just keep going and going and going. 
and 35 is 3500 is probably a decent one um he's doing the fox i mean he's doing a whole weekend when? at the fox in september oh damn that's yeah yeah he yeah. has a whole weekend there. He's doing a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Same mm-hmm. weekend as Motor City Comedy Festival this year. But he's already sold out Friday and Saturday, so we're yeah. not really competing with that at this point. But nah, like, I mean, like Sunday, he's still got tickets. Yeah, it is what it is. I yeah. mean, but I'm mm-hmm. not too worried about it. Um, yeah, but took a picture with him. Oh, I, I met Mike Tyson yeah. too, man. Oh, that's gotta be Mike Tyson the, the day after yeah. I met Chris Rock. Yeah. yeah. Yep. What's not Tyson many people like? was there. He was cool. He yeah. was sitting in the audience, right in the middle. Uh, he was bigger than his his homies, his protection. I <laughs> yeah. think he was his own protection. Yeah, and uh, it was like ten, maybe fifteen people. In Don't there. you love that? Where you're like somebody like Mike Tyson has protect. Like I get it to some extent, but you're also like, man, who's gonna? Uh, I guess like somebody at a bar tried like running up on him or something. He punched somebody out not too long ago. I think. Damn. I think that happened at like a bar, and there was like video of it. But the person like provoked it. I think people so, always want to, you know, yeah, challenge you exactly. You like it happened. Like somebody challenged him to the point That's where he happened. was like he had to like defend himself. That happened at my show, man. It yeah, happened at my show. I was on stage, and guy came out of nowhere. He demanded to fight Mike Tyson. He showed him respect first. He was like, "Hey, Mike, you the baddest motherfucker in here, man. Can you square up with me? I want to <laughs> I wanna get my 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 skills up." Can you square up with me, bro, bro? He was like, like, fuck what this guy talking about. And then the (laughs) comedians was like, yeah, he was like, hey, man, it's a comedy show going on, man. And uh, the comedians in the back, they was like, hey, Darius. I guess they were trying to signal for me to say something. I'm like, what you want me to say? This motherfucker want to fight Mike Tyson. Yeah, you're trying to get me to break up a Mike Tyson <laughs> fight? And the dude is trying to, this dude wants to fight Mike Tyson. And then the mo- other guy is Mike Tyson. Yeah. Like, you want me to get in the middle of that? No, nah, I'm good, man. Ain't nothing yeah, I can really no. say to, to I don't want to get in the middle of a Mike Tyson fight, especially with somebody who just thinks they can fight him at a bar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, no. shit, we're going to let this play out. Anybody bro. who has that much confidence, I don't have the confidence to yeah, try and stop shit, them. Yeah, 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 ain't shit I can say that's going <laughs> to stop him. <laughs> you you don't have anything to lose at that point exactly yeah <laughs> yeah that's why two people who don't have shit to lose people who don't have teeth and people who want to fight mike tyson <laughs> Dude. They got shit to yeah lose. man it's wild i had somebody who had no teeth walk into the gas station behind me and i went and like this is like just the other day i <laughs> love detroit man <laughs> I like walked into the gas station and like i went to go buy gas at the and there was like one guy working the counter and then so a homeless person just like followed me in behind somebody with no teeth you know i think yeah. homeless had to be they just walk in behind me and while i'm paying for gas they quickly just grab a sandwich from the little like cooler you know right up front and just walk out with it and then the dude who's like ringing me up for gas is like no 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 <laughs> like, they just walk out like he's behind glass like what's yeah. he gonna do step out and stop right. the person from taking the same Probably they not. waited for me to walk in to distract the guy so he couldn't run out quickly and stop them and like i was like yeah. Damn. people with no teeth got nothing to lose nothing it was lose, like an bro. egg salad sandwich one of those prepackaged ones you know yeah but what else is a person with no teeth gonna eat egg salad Soup, <laughs> yeah, soup and egg salad sandwiches. Yeah. One of those soggy egg salads that sit, you know, okay. like it gets shipped to the gas station. Yeah. It's not even made and locally delivered, you know. Yeah, yeah one I'd of those. I'd have grabbed a can of, uh, of Campbell's or something. <laughs> they just took the sandwich and went out. The and they're like, and "This left. guy's gonna buy gas and distract this guy, yep. and I'm gonna take my toothless ass Use and you. grab a egg salad sandwich and yep. dip." And, like, I thought he was just yelling no at me. But, yeah, man. That was a chess game for him. Yeah, it really was. (laughs) They had that worked out. I didn't even realize what was going on until after it was already done. And I was like, I just got used. I was like, and I didn't even know it. Yeah. (laughs) It's amazing. Yeah. Oh, man. All right. Well, this has been fun. It's been great talking to you, man. We're just going to wrap it up here. I mean, it's been a great time. I look forward to watching you work the rest of the weekend. Thank you. Seeing you uh, do a few more headlining sets. And uh, let's uh, hope for some good shows. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, thanks for coming and doing the Detroit Comedy Podcast. Thank you. I'm looking around like it's a live audience. There's no audience here. There there should be. But (laughs) it's just an empty room of people. But thanks for coming and doing the podcast, man. Tune in again next week, everybody. See you.